Welcome back to CBS Mornings. Earlier, we reported on text messages obtained by CBS News and The Washington Post that illustrate the extraordinary relationship between the wife of a Supreme Court justice and the Trump White House. The text between Justice Clarence Thomas's wife, her name is Virginia, conservative activist who goes by Jenny, and Trump Chief of Staff Mark Meadows document her attempts to help guide President Trump's strategy to overturn the 2020 election. CBS News Chief Election and Campaign Correspondent, that's Robert Costa, is back with us, along with Bob Woodward, his colleague at The Washington Post. Good morning to you both. We're normally got two Bobs, but Robert, we're going to stick with Robert for you today. So, Robert, <laughs> start us off. Of these 29 texts, is there anything that stands out to you more than others? And do you believe that there are other texts that we have not seen yet? Uh, there might very well be texts we have not seen. 29 were provided to the committee, 21 from Ginny Thomas to Meadows, 8 from Meadows to Ginny Thomas. These were part of a collection of over 2,300 text messages Meadows provided to the committee. But there are gaps. I mean, the last text in what we've reported comes in late November 2020. Then there's a stray one about Vice President Pence and the end of America in January of 2021, days after the insurrection. So this is a story that's beginning, not ending. Why do you think he would turn over checks that contain such information that is so potentially damaging to them? I, I think there was a process where they had a legal team looking through these. Uh, in the days after the election, there was a more cooperative atmosphere. But uh, Robert and I have been talking about what, the, not just the details of these text messages, but what does it mean? And it shows that Ginny Thomas was acting like a political consultant, a true believer political consultant or campaign manager advocating, smearing uh, what uh, in one text is called the Biden crime family, who are uh, involved in ballot fraud. Again, there's nothing uh, to support that. But what really struck me was the effort by Ginny Thomas and Mark Meadows to say they are taking the moral high ground. Mm -hmm. And here uh, you, you see Meadows saying, this is a fight between good and evil. Yeah, now, that. that's the problem with our politics yeah. now. Everything is that. seen, oh, this is evil if it's on the other side. We are good. If yeah, it's certainly, th it's certainly, this is an, I'm sorry, go ahead. Bob, it's, it's certainly a us versus them mentality in Washington these days. But Robert, do you know if Justice Thomas himself was aware of these text messages? At one point, she refers to, I talked to my best friend. We don't know what that means. But do you think that he was aware of this conversation? That's a question for the January 6th committee, Gail. And, and the question I have as a reporter, and Woodward and I have discussed this, is will this committee now issue a subpoena for Ginny Thomas? Will it perhaps even consider asking the justice himself, Clarence Thomas, to come in and talk to the committee? Uh, this is a tricky area for Congress. The, the oversight of a Supreme Court justice is always a bit of a vague area. Congress can impeach a Supreme Court justice if they wish. But otherwise, Supreme Court justices have enormous independence. Ginny Thomas, though, is clearly communicating a legal strategy, a messaging strategy, political strategy with the chief of staff of the White House, executive branch official, communicating with the spouse of a judicial branch official. And in these text messages, we also see discussion of the legislative branch. A, a map of Trump relationships and this mission to overturn the election stretching across the entire U.S. government. Mm. So, Bob, it's Vlad. Uh, looking at what we know so far about the investigation and your reporting and the fact that there's a recent court filing from the January 6th committee uh, where lawyers in the panel say they have a good faith basis for concluding that former President Trump engaged in a criminal conspiracy, where else do you think that this might lead? Well, it's a question of getting more information. But, see, the people who believe in the Constitution, the Constitution makes very clear after an election for a president is held, the states submit their electors, and they did in this case. And uh, there is this memo, which we have in our book, Peril, by uh, the constitutional scholar, 
uh, John Eastman really planning a coup, literally saying, oh, there's seven states who submitted alternative electors. Zero evidence of that uh, investigations conducted by Trump supporters. And it, it's the tone of these texts that really struck me after doing this for 50 years. And that is the discussion uh, in the, one of the last texts by Ginny Thomas. It's the end of America if we lose. Mm. This is apocalyptic language, this idea that this isn't just a political skirmish or fight. This is a moral one. This is uh, not our existence really hinges on doing it our way. Well, as the great Graham Greene, the British novelist, said, you've always got to understand that the other side has a case. And so what Jenny Thomas has done here, what Mark Meadows said, they've just turned up the heat and the division in the country in a way that uh, leads us to the, let's yeah. be direct about it, the political catastrophe we are living through. Now, Robert, I want to get back to Justice Thomas. Uh, we know that Supreme Court justices are known to have political leanings. And if Justice Thomas is known to be more conservative, why does his wife's activism in a conservative way have an impact on what is going on? It's a good question, but it's and it's no surprise, however, that Ginny Thomas is a political activist. This has been something she has done uh, most of her professional and adult life. She's been on the right wing. She's been part of many groups that are advocating for conservative causes. And the justice and his spouse have long maintained that they have independent professional lives. And she has, of course, a First Amendment right to participate in political activity and say whatever she would like. The question that now arises for the January 6th committee is whether she had any role in what they are now asserting in a court filing was this criminal conspiracy. And what was the knowledge, if any, of the justice of his wife's activities and this, as Bob and I have discussed in recent days, an unprecedented entanglement between a spouse close to the uh, judicial branch and a White House chief of staff. We're in uncharted territory with a lot of this reporting, and we're, we're going to have to just see where it goes and pull the thread even more. All right, Robert Costa and Bob Woodward, we like to say here at CBS News Original Reporting, and we like to say exquisite storytelling. Bravo to the two of you. Thank you very much. More to come for sure. Jenny Thomas and Justice Thomas did not respond to our request for comment on this story. We reached out several times. Jenny Thomas has publicly denied that any conflict of interest exists between her marriage to a Supreme Court justice and her work as an activist. Mark Meadows' lawyer has said the text, ex the text exchanges rather do not present any legal issues here to be continued for sure. That's for sure.